So you've just picked up a Windows Mixed Reality headset. And you're probably asking yourself, what games can I play with it? Am I going to run into any issues? Uh, I've heard some bad things. Well, today we're going to talk about the compatibility of several games with Windows Mixed Reality headsets. Now, you probably see in the background here, Lone Echo. And that's going to be the first game we're going to talk about today. Uh, but I just want to mention, first, I had this idea last night. So I was missing gameplay footage for several games, and I got you know, it all recorded here in like within a couple hours. So if some things look a little janky, that's the reason why. You can usually tell my Let's Plays from, oh, I need to get some footage. Also, the first few games we're going to be looking at are going to be games that I got through the Oculus Store that I'm playing through Revive. Now, of course, with Revive, uh, we're running the Oculus Store, uh, Revive, as well as uh, Steam VR. So we got a few things going along with the Windows Mixed Reality uh, app as well. Now, Lone Echo as you can see, is a fantastic looking game. It's a very well optimized game, especially for something that came out in 2017. And I'm happy to say it's probably one of the best playing VR games, uh, even for a headset that's not designed for it. Uh, didn't run into any tracking issues, didn't have any problems, uh, besides hitting the buttons on the side of your helmet for your uh, visor and your lights. The visor was a hard one. Once you get the visor up, the light's pretty easy to hit. It's a larger uh, hitbox uh, than the visor. And the controllers, you replace the like the A, B, and the, the X and Y with the in and the down on the D-pad. I think also out on the D-pad for a couple of things. It's, it's been a few months, or it's been about, about a month since I played the game. But uh, works fantastically with my Samsung Odyssey Plus. If you're interested in the game, don't hesitate. Go ahead and pick it up. It is well worth the money, and it is really fun to play. Nefertari, Journey to Eternity. I hope I'm saying that properly. Uh, so I originally found this on the Oculus Store. Again, playing through Revive. Um, so that's why you see the Oculus controllers in there, uh, the original touch controllers. And this game looks and plays pretty well uh, through a Windows Mixed Reality headset, I have to say. Um, even though it's not designed for that, uh, really didn't have any issues, uh, really just kind of teleporting and highlighting things you hit in on the D-pad uh, on each controller to turn on and off the uh, the flashlights per hand. Now, when I tried it through Steam VR though, it was terrible. Uh, like, the images were flipped uh, right and left and was ultimately unplayable. I have no idea why it was like that. It might be a bug, might be fixed at some point in the future, but if you do want to get this game, get it, or actually experience, get it through the Oculus Store and play it through Revive. Looks great, works well that way. Steam VR, unusable. The Kremer Collection, VR Museum. Uh, I have to say, this does not work. Uh, you can see I'm uh, at certain points here, I'm trying to teleport what you do with your trigger on your controller, and you can't move. Uh, it's completely unusable. I, I hate to say it because I have a huge interest in museum experiences through VR. I, I think they're neat. Uh, it's I can sit on my rear all day and <laughs> not have to go in place and uh, view these awesome things. And unfortunately... This just does not work. It might be a great experience on an Oculus uh, headset, but for Windows Mixed Reality, uh, completely unusable. And I do have there is a good VR museum later in this video uh, that works, but this one is a no go for right now. Hopefully they'll fix it. Masterworks, uh, another experience. I was really looking forward to trying it out. Uh, it has some neat places you can go visit. Um, completely unusable. Completely unusable. Um, this one I don't even know if it would necessarily be useful on a Quest or a Rift S headset through the Oculus Store. Because as you can see, you can't see my controllers. I'm trying to, I mean, really, I kind of have them in front of my face here, trying to get something to register so I can move and do something in this. And it's just completely unusable. Now, they might fix it at some point. I might be using it wrong, doing something wrong. However, um, this is absolutely unusable, and I would avoid it unless something changes in the future. The Room VR, A Dark Matter. This is our first Steam VR game in this list, and uh, it's a game I really enjoy. I like puzzle games are even better in VR, and I'm happy to say this thing runs flawlessly. Yeah, this is not a uh, shoot 'em up running gun type of game. We're not climbing over things, uh, anything like that, but it never ran to any issues with this game. I uh, ran perfectly for my Samsung Odyssey uh, Plus, and if there's something that you're interested in and uh, you have a WMR headset, definitely be one to look at picking up. 
So the VR Museum of Fine Arts, I had mentioned earlier that there was actually a pretty good VR museum in this video, and this is it. Now, I had noticed on a WMR compatibility list I found from Reddit that was like back a couple of years ago, back 2018, uh, mentioned that this game's teleporting was not functioning. Now, as you can see here, that seems to have been fixed. Everything works smoothly with this game. Things look incredible. Uh, generally run into any issues. Uh, sometimes it could take a moment before you can really start moving. Uh, so you have to kind of give it a second to let everything load in. But uh, if you're interested in something like this, a museum experience, then uh, this is one to take a look at. And it's free, so that doesn't hurt either. Gone. A sophisticated gentleman's game. At the apex of sophistication. Of course, that's a lie. Gorn is a beautiful disaster of brutality and violence and potentially breaking things on your desk or your amplifier, which I almost did a few times. I'm surprised my controller still works, but I'm happy to say with this heavily melee-focused game that it works great with Windows Mixed Reality. It's just a well-optimized game. Uh, it just works, and not in the Todd Howard way. The Talos Principle. It's a game that I played a few years ago in its flat screen variation, and I have to say I enjoyed it quite a bit. I decided to pick it up in VR, see if I can get a little bit more immersion out of it. I like puzzle games. There's a theme there. Now, it's mostly uh, a pretty good game. It's pretty much a straight port from its flat screen version, but there is one glaring issue that uh, I think I should mention, and it's with the sky. The sky seems like the sides aren't quite offset properly. Everything else looks fine, but the sky looks a little... Confusing is the kind of best way I can put it. And you can't see it in this video because uh, it's just out of one camera, but it's something that could be very distracting and could be an issue for some people. It doesn't bother me too much, but uh, it's something that could potentially distract from an otherwise great game. Budget Cuts. Uh, it's one of those must-play VR games. It's been around for a few years. Uh, you see it around a lot, and uh, if you're new to VR, it's definitely one of the first games you should check out. Uh, very easy on new players, very fun, it's a stealth game, you have to try to avoid robots, and the mechanics are very interesting in it. And I'm happy to say that with the Windows Mixed Reality, everything runs smoothly. The mechanics uh, work as they should, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, it's all good to go with budget cuts. Space Pirate Trainer, please excuse the gameplay I haven't played in probably about half a year. Uh, happy to say that no issues. Uh, it's a simple game. All the controls work beautifully. And again, one of those first VR games to pick up, it's good to go. Super hot. Super hot. Uh, another one of those uh, go-to VR games. Now, please excuse my playing. Uh, I'm terrible at it. I don't play it enough. Um, but I'm happy to say that one, this is one of those must-buy VR games. Uh, Easy to pick up, uh, easy to play for hours or just a few minutes, and it works beautifully with Windows Mixed Reality. Uh, everything works properly. There's no weird tracking, no awful contr control configuration, no glitchiness to it. Uh, it's one of those where it's going to give you a good experience out the gate. Il Divino, Michelangelo's. Sistine Chapel ceiling. Uh, really neat experience, uh, very educational. Uh, weird, one weird thing about it is you cannot start it from the VR headsets. Uh, you kind of have to start it from the desktop. I mean, you, you can click on it in Steam VR, but you have to kind of take the headset off and actually click on it on the computer, which is why you'll see my cursor firmly in the lower left hand corner now in the center of the screen. Uh, but I think that affects every type of headset, not just WMR. But besides that, works beautifully. And, everything, and the ceiling looks fantastic. They get all the cracks and everything in there. Arizona Sunshine. Walk around shooting zombies. How can anything be wrong with that? Uh, gameplay is mostly fine. Uh, my biggest issue with the game that I've come across so far, I'm only about halfway through the game, is uh, with grenades. You really have to do like a long lobbing motion. You have to put some effort behind throwing it. Uh, if you don't, it's going to fall right at your feet. I've done that a few times. Uh, it's a little jarring. Besides that, gameplay is good. Iron sights are a little small in some games, like the PPK you get in this area. Uh, but it works mostly fine. Boneworks is one of the most important VR games that are out there. Before Half-Life Alex, it was the big VR game. And one of the huge things about Boneworks is it relies on a physics engine. Uh, 
for things. And that's something that can really stress your tracking. And inside-out tracking does have its shortcomings. It's not as good as outside-in tracking. Uh, it's going to fully admit that. And if there is is if there are issues with the algorithms for your inside-out tracking, it's going to get exposed in a big way with Boneworks. Now, I've played nine or ten hours of Boneworks. I've started a couple times, left and did something else. Right now, I'm probably about a good three quarters of the way through the game, and uh, I haven't noticed any issues with the inside-out tracking. Uh, one big concern is that uh, you're if you're shooting a two-handed gun, that that front hand, that front control is going to lose tracking. Uh, I know some issues with that when I first started playing VR, but either it's my experience or there was an update, but I haven't noticed too much of an issue there. Now, climbing can be really frustrating <laughs> in Boneworks if you lose tracking uh, or if uh, you can't get your hand over. And there are some issues with that if you haven't looked at your hand in a few seconds. Uh, then sometimes you have to kind of jimmy your arm over. And that's an issue with the inside-out tracking. If you're playing with an Oculus headset, it'll probably be just as bad, uh, if not worse, or better. It can be a little better, again, uh, when some, some lose some with that. But as far as issues caused by Windows Mixed Reality, the controls are fine. Uh, the tracking is fine with it. You do have some shortcomings with inside and out tracking, but that's just the nature of that tracking system. So now we're going to finish up with Half-Life Alex, And I'm just going to come out and say it. It works fantastically with Windows Mixed Reality headsets. Of course, we all, we've all seen the videos. Uh, you probably already know this, but uh, it's my two cents on it. Valve did a very good job making sure this game worked with as many different headsets as possible. They really want to make sure that it was accessible to people who had high-end equipment and low-end equipment. Um, and it there's really not any issues. The gameplay is going to be more limited compared to like Boneworks. You're not climbing a bunch of stuff. There's little cheaters that help your hands find uh, the top of a slide or it'll snap you once you get to the uh, top of a ladder to the, uh, the level that you're going to. But all in all, it is a fantastic experience with inside-out tracking with the Windows Mixed Reality algorithms. Um, really don't run into any issues. And you don't feel like you have to really like just chuck grenades <laughs> to get them to go anywhere like you do in Arizona Sunshine. One issue is, since it is a very good, comfortable game to play, you do find yourself walking around with your hands to your side. Of course, it still registers the, uh, the button clicks and presses and everything like that. Sometimes you'll see your hand floating out in the distance. You just want to make sure every once in a while either you bring your hands up or you look down at your hands. Again, limitation of inside-out tracking, nature of the beast with that. I also wanted to mention that I use in-loop rechargeable batteries. Uh, those have that 1.2 volt uh, charge to them. And there's some controversy around that. In my use, I really haven't noticed any issues. So if you are looking at in-loops or you already have them, feel free to use them. If you have issues, there are some uh, 1.5 volt uh, batteries out there that are rechargeable you can use. They do have to use their own recharger, though, so do keep that in mind. I also wanted to say that uh, this is going to be an ongoing series for Windows Mixed Reality compatibility with games. Uh, and I want to make sure this keeps on going because there's not a lot of resources out there uh, for stuff like this. If I happen to pick up on some fixes... I'm also going to make sure to include those in the videos. Now, these, the future videos are going to be a lot shorter. I mean, like five, three or five games of video. Um, I'm going to kind of make them as I, I go along. Uh, it's not going to be these, this, you know, 10 or so games like we have in this video. But if this was useful, if this was helpful for you and you, you're interested in it, do subscribe, stay tuned, and make sure you catch the next one.